our Wednesday, September 9th edition of News in Depth. First up, postmortem reveals that the murdered Henry boys had their spines severed. More in this report. Tears, hurt, and anger were some of the emotions expressed at the postmortem examination of the murdered cousins Joel and Isaiah Henry. The postmortem examination was conducted this morning by Dr. Nial Singh at the Memorial Gardens Funeral Home in the Lurapentir Cemetery. It was there the revelation of how the teens met their dreadful demise was revealed. Attorney at Law Nigel Hughes was a witness on behalf of the family and he said Joel had 18 wounds and his neck was severed. The, what we suspect is the fatal wound, was severed his spine from the back. He had several head injuries. He had about seven or eight uh, what we would call wounds or chops to his head. And the pathologist suspected that those, after he got those wounds, he fell to the ground and was on the ground when that wound that severed his spine between the first and second vertebrae was inflicted. That's in the case of uh, Joel Henry. Um, he also, um, there's evidence that he bit his tongue. And Joel Henry has several defensive wounds in his hands. It will chops. He's got several incised wounds that clearly come, came from a sharp instrument. So he had about four or five uh, wounds in his hand, on both hands, so he had defensive wounds. Then the injuries to the head, fell on the ground, got a chop that severed his, um, his neck. And if, if I can just give you the, the uh, particulars on that, it was pretty nasty. Um, he, his own was 14 inches by three by six inches deep. So the wound that actually, the one that severed his spine was 14 inches long, three inches wide, well, it ended up being three inches wide and six inches deep. Isaiah's spine was also severed. And in his case, his vertebrae was severed between the, his, sorry, his spine was severed between the second and third vertebrae. And the measurements of his wounds were 14 inches by four and six inches in depth. So uh, in both of their cases, both of these young men had their spines severed very, very high up between the second and third vertebrae. Um, there were no defensive wounds on the hands of Isaiah, um, which would tend to suggest that what happened is that the amount of uh, chops that he got to his head, he would have fallen on the ground, and while he was on the ground, that wound that severed his spine would have been inflicted. Um, Post-mortem is finished. What we have done is we have taken both video footage and still footage which we are going to be sharing with pathologists in Canada and internationally and hope that as a result of the images that we share that they may be able to either confirm or add their uh, interpretation of what happened. Um, the doctors suspected that they would have died somewhere between 36 hours uh, prior to the time they were found. The two cousins were found dead in the back dam at Cotton Tree West Coast Babies on Sunday. Joel's brother was there to witness the post-mortem examination and he described the murder as gruesome. The man, well, with me brother now, the man was sit down from back. Yes, right? The man was sit down from back and the man chop her a linear and them thing. And then with me cousin now, yes. Three quarter of this man neck cut out body, just this and then them uh, savage like X up the air and them thing, chop you up in the air and them thing, you see? Yeah, real sad. Well with this we ain't taking this at all, we ain't taking this. We need rather them uh, take me and left me body lay live your life, you see? Isaiah's father used the opportunity to call for justice. But this murder, that, uh, this thing, incident that happened, I believe in God that this is the time, this is the, the, the murder that will solve all the case because a lot of, a lot of people die in, the, in there. A lot of people die in there. And we, on, there's a lot of unsolved depth in there. Um, and I want to say, if it is going on media, um, I am not a racial person. I am I born in number three. The community I live in, I, I, I live among Indian people. We, we eat together, we sleep together. 
uh, uh, we live together. The majority of my friends uh, that I move with is Indian friends. We meet with brother, big, big, big man, the older man than me. Yes, and, and, and because of why I was moving with them, they, they, they give me a nickname. And that nickname is Jira. And the meaning of Jira, what they come up with, is because Jira have to go in the dal. See, that means the only black one that is living among the they call me Jira. And this same son of mine, he, the majority of his friends, is Indian. This same area where you get killed, he know people in this community, he is a person that dwelled in the place there. And he get the same Indian friends. And they call him nickname Black Boy too. The police have so far detained seven persons as the investigations continue. More news after this break. Shh, it's your new secret. The all-in-one weapon for perfecting imperfections and capturing flawless skin. A lot of brands forget women of color or just don't understand that we come in all shades. From caramel to ebony, there is such a range. Iman Cosmetics is for every woman and features a line of skincare products and cosmetics including 16 foundation shades, powder, concealer, lipstick, blush, eyeshadow, highlighter and BB cream. Visit us at Lot 75 Swamp Section, Rosal Town. That's behind the market. Or call 337-4422 or 688-9249. Shh. The Guyana police force was called to the West Coast Bobis area again to investigate another murder based after the brutal murder of the Henry Cousins. Today, 17-year-old Harris Singh was found murdered in the back dam of Number 3 Village, West Coast Bobis. He was found with a wound to his head and his motorcycle was also burnt. According to a police report, the force wishes to go on record to say that it will pursue the investigation of Harris Singh with the same intensity it did for Joel and Isaiah Henry and will most certainly bring the perpetrators to justice. There are reports that the dead teen is the grandson of one of the suspects in custody for the murders of the teenagers, Joel and Isaiah Henry. Meanwhile, the police commission is taking this opportunity to warn citizens to desist from all unlawful acts, which only threatens to further deteriorate law and order in this country, failing which all efforts will be made to prosecute offenders to the fullest extent of the law. There is Chatterpaul Harry Paul, known as Roy, aged 24 years, of Block BI, Bad Settlement, West Coast of Beast. The incident occurred just around 15 hours 45 this afternoon at Bad Settlement Public Road. The police, in a report on the incident, said their inquiries disclosed that the victim was in his motor vehicle on the public road at Bad Settlement when it was observed that he exited the vehicle with a shotgun and discharged one rung in the air before discharging three rounds towards a crowd of protesters who were about 60 meters away. As a result of his actions, he was attacked by the crowd and beaten. The police, who were some distance away, having observed the commotion, rushed to the scene where they discovered the victim lying on the ground with several injuries about his body. He was subsequently picked up and taken to the Fort Wellington Hospital, where he was pronounced dead by a doctor on duty. The body is currently at the hospital. Police ranks are on the ground conducting further investigations. Shh. It's your new secret. The all-in-one weapon for perfecting imperfections and capturing flawless skin. A lot of brands forget women of color or just don't understand that we come in all shades. From caramel to ebony, there is such a range. Iman Cosmetics is for every woman and features a line of skincare products and cosmetics including 16 foundation shades, powder, concealer, lipstick, blush, eyeshadow, highlighter and BB cream. Visit us at Lot 75 Swamp Section, Rosal Town. That's behind the market. Or call 337-4422 or 688-9249. Shh. Before we go, final return.
turn from the DPP in murder of number one man. Here is that report. Protests erupted on the quarantine public road at number one as residents call for justice for Orlando Jonas, known as Lando. Residents feel that enough is enough and Guyanese must walk freely in any part of this country as they demanded justice for their fellow villager. Jonas was found in a pool of blood Saturday night at Albion with a stab wound to his abdomen and a gash to his face. His friend Mahindra Ramnarine, who was accompanying him, was also slashed to his face by the perpetrators. Jacqueline Jonas, the victim's aunt, related to this newscast what she was told about the incident. She said the death of her nephew was tough. That's tough. Because of... Oh. That one is tough because only they say my lost brother. And so to have another death. That's tough. That's, um, that's very tough. We're trusting that, um, you know, God is the person who gives life and God who takes life. And um, we trust in that, you know, that we have first done this, that, you know, the police will find them and, you know, just said being the given and we feel satisfied. No kill car I was in skin that open. They need to have more police patrol because it's not the first time that um, people are being robbed and attacked by, um, by other perpetrators, so they need to have more police protection there. Because that scheme is any and anybody has gone and ill there, so you know, you don't know. So you need to have more police protection. Parshu Ramnarain, the father of Mohindra, who was injured during the attack, says his son cannot eat anything at this point. Well, he did not know right now he can eat anything because he the face the shot. And I know them are three. So I don't know what they kill by for the them juki, my neck, the language of your face. The man said Jonas was like a family to them and was employed with him as a laborer. No, no, just like, like I would like, live like family. Because I live just like next week and most of them I would just do the wrong thing. So he's not a bad person and he never make fight with nobody from work site or no way. Like, well, they never get no problem, nobody cover, but eight months I was walk right back then, right by school every day and go and come, and night and day, sometimes night I catch you, sometimes day, like, now I was done at five o'clock. So, I mean, they never get no argument or no problem, nobody around there, whatever. The police have since detained two men for the incident, which was caught on surveillance camera. The police are reporting that the investigation has been concluded and the file is en route to the Director of Public Prosecution for legal advice. And that has brought us to the end of our news for tonight. For these and other stories, visit our website at rdproductiongy.com or our Facebook and Instagram page at Royce and Drake's Production. On behalf of our news team, thank you for joining us and join us again tomorrow for more news. Good night.